What's up, everybody? We got Poppy, Ivan, what's up? Sorry for the delay, just running a little behind. Um, yeah, so as we wait for Biggs, I want to thank you all again just for tuning in every Friday. And yeah, how's the sound doing? I know I got new AirPods, so I know the first time I did this, it was a little crazy with the feedback. Watching DBZ. What up? Leave them Dior's on the 14. <laughs> How did the Concord 11 go out of stock in two hours? You gotta be on it. Appreciate it. Thank you for the, for the feedback on the sound. I don't know if y'all was with me that first episode. That first episode was crazy. Someone said it sounded like a McDonald's drive through when they on the mic. What up? Um, yeah, I take L's too all the time, especially me. I wear a size 14, so you know, those only come a dime a dozen. So I definitely take a whole lot of L's. Body your sight. Okay, you want 10 raffles. What's this live for? Just answer questions. Nah, this live is about, you know, highlighting, you know, what's going on today in the world of all the social unrest. And yeah, you know, help informing us at finish line and everybody else. Yeah, Elijah, we're a size 14, man. You know, when you 6'5", it is what it is. comments nah, nah. yeah man 13 14 there's probably only like three bears easier concord 11 gotta go to concord 11 i am not the owner of finish line for sure not but i am the senior coaching partnership strategist Four finish line. How's my mental health been? You know, my mental health has been solid, you know. It's been solid. Try to stay positive. Yes. You definitely need status points. Everybody get your status points up. I'm telling you, get the status points up. Coach me how to win. Man, you just gotta work hard. And be nice to people. Nah, man, you know. I had to buy a, a iPhone stand. Have I traveled? Nah, I have not traveled. I did a nice hike, though. A nice hike, but no traveling. Mm -hmm. I would say, you know, the sales associates definitely don't get a lot of love. Like, you know, they're on the front lines right now. So I love all the sales associates. Keep doing what you're doing. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions. My day is smooth. Someone asks what? Where you from? From New York. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. What's up? Let me see what he got. Oh, there you go. I just saw the request from Biggs. What's up, Fats? Hey, there you go. Oh, man, how's it going? Everything good? Good, good. Mm -hmm. Appreciate you taking the time out, you know, on this Friday. 
come talk to come talk with finish line. Um, yeah, so I know with you, your time is precious, so we can get right into it. Um, <laughs> um, so let's start about let's talk about how you know for people who don't know who you are, let's talk about you know the beginnings with you and if you could describe yourself so the people who don't know who you are. Like, well, I mean, I don't. Like, I, I'm not used to describing myself. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you want to, if you want to go ahead and do that. But I mean, my my start and and started a music business back in '96 with Rockefeller. You know, so yeah. Um, everything else is kind of history. Cool, cool. So mainly, like the the premise of this conversation is to talk about mentorship within, like you know, the black community, and it's in the, and it's important. So knowing you and your background, starting such like a iconic and legendary label, how how did you identify some mentors during that time, especially as you go into like a new venture? It's funny. I did. Uh, I, we've never really had any mentors. It was all mm -hmm. kind of hands on and we did everything ourselves. Uh, but there is an importance of that. You know, since then, you know, you gain experience, knowledge, wisdom, so forth from, you know, doing some, you know, going through these business through failure or success. And through that, I'm able to give people, you know, some nuggets of, you know, information that has helped me throughout that process that may have, you know, that may or may not help them. So the importance of mentorship is really, really, I would say is definitely really important. Um, I've been able to help some, you know, some kids, um, you know, do some things or make, help them think about things differently. But, uh, you know, un, you know, I don't know if it's fortunate or unfortunate. We didn't really have any back then. There wasn't a lot of people that we could look at that was doing what we did. We was kind mm -hmm. of the first to kind of carve out that space for ourselves. Yeah, definitely like the pioneers within that space. Mm -hmm. So being that you don't have any mentors and you're learning everything kind of like on the fly, like how did you hone your craft and like the music business over the years, especially dating back to that time and up to now? Yeah, so, uh, you know, it was a partnership, right? And all three of us, we had a lot to bring to the table, whether it was marketing, leadership, and our, our, our music skills. So, yeah. you know, we had, it was a great trio that we were able to lean on each other and then, you know, we would go and think about things for hours and hours before, you know, we ever made any decisions. Uh, everything was really calculated. Uh, even, you know, uh, day one before we even started, we said we mm -hmm. would get the clothing and all these other businesses. So for us, the hands-on training, and, and again, you know, I want to really uh, express that you learn so much through failure, you know. So, yeah, yeah we had success for the, with the first album, but we signed the bad deal, right? And, mm -hmm. you know, we took that information and got better lawyers and signed a better deal and then had more success, right? We, you know, and then anything that we got into, we had to learn from A to Z because we didn't mm -hmm. have that much knowledge about it. So even though things that we wanted to get into, so for example, clothing, you know, you got to learn about distribution, manufacturing, right. you know, design, CADs, tech packs, timing, you know, um, uh, swatches, you know, it's like yeah. so much that, that, that goes into it. So we just dived into everything um, head on and just try to get as much information as we could. And that's another thing uh, that I tell a lot of people because they want to, you know, jump into different businesses, but don't mm -hmm. really look at what it takes to get into that, right? For example, right. you know, somebody say, look, Vicks, I want to open up a clothing store. I'm like, really? You know, what the square footage is for cost, how many employees you're going to need, what's the turnover for the items, how long it takes, how much capital you're going to need. And they don't really think mm -hmm. about that. They just think about the overall yeah. business and, and not what goes into that. So I just try to, you know, help people think about things a little differently. Cool. So... How is you? How does one person like identify a mentor? You know, as far uh, as like someone they may look out to within like the industry. How does mm -hmm. one like you know identify somebody who you know resonates with them and someone they can speak to on different things? Uh, I don't know how they do it. I mean, like I said, I never had a mentor, so I don't know. You know, yeah. but obviously, you know, there's so many people, of, uh, especially of color, that's um, been successful. And then there's people in the communities that, that look just like us and you know, that, that mm. come from where we come from and they want to get out too. So they look at the people that, you know, that, that got out to say, look, I can probably do some of these things that they did and people reach out, you know, whether on Instagram, through other people, whatever it is. Um, you know, uh, for me, it's tough right now because I still get a lot of messages about mentorship. So yes. I just try to put, uh, you know, whether it's these quotes or things that, you know, that, that's, that helps a dialogue because I can do something, you know, with a quote that starts dialogue with a lot of people and, and that might help them. It may not come from me, but it may come from other people uh, on the message boards or in the comments 
that they see something that, you know, that uh, sparks uh, a light into something that they want to do. But, um, you know, as far as figuring out in this, you know, there's all mm -hmm. these platforms, LinkedIn or whatever, uh, whatever it is, the business that you're in, if you see somebody, or it may not be business at all, it might just be life coaching or just, you know, right. getting through, you know, whatever is, uh, it could be re religious or whatever it is, I would just say, you know, just, just try to reach out uh, to people, whoever it is that you're looking up to in that sector that you want to try to get, um, you know, some information from. Yeah, I feel like, on top of that too, it just helps when you just un kind of understand everybody's schedule and timing, you know, yeah. and for people not to get discouraged if they don't like reply immediately, mm -hmm. especially if you, got, you know, people like yourself or any other entrepreneurs, their time is like, time is money. So, yeah. Um, and lastly, how do you feel about like, you know, everything you see going on today with like different corporations talk, speaking about, you know, their own diversity within their companies and how do we as a community like, help advance ourselves in those situations well i think one we got to hold them accountable because there's a lot of pe there's a lot of talk right now but we mm -hmm. need to see the action right oh, there's all these people pledging money but where is it going how is it actually helping our communities and i think that there has to be something put forth to say look this is going to be the direct effect right what's the roi you know because if, if if at the end of the day, they want to help these communities, then what exactly are we doing? There's those, everybody's pledging, pledging and saying Black Lives Matter, but what does that mean to them and their company, right? Mm -hmm. Are you just trying to get on trend so you're not getting canceled or do you really want to help? You know, are you hiring um, people of color, you know, minorities, uh, whether a Black, Latin um, community or, or whatever it is? And, you know, and what exactly does that look like? But I think right. we definitely need to hold people's feet to the fire to say, okay, now you did this, what's the next step? Because there's a lot of uh, companies that's just, you know, using these things probably for buzzwords, but I, mm -hmm. I, I really want to see the action. Yeah, and how do you uh, feel, or what's your suggestion on how to navigate in that, you know, those corporate settings when you're dealing with all this? Um, I mean, you know, it's, it's, we have so many friends and, um, and family that's, you know, doing a lot of things in this space right now. So I think it needs to be like, especially in music, uh, you know, I can speak about that because, you know, there's been the, uh, the Black Music uh, Coalition. And, you know, a lot of times people are pointing to these companies and saying, give us back and reparations and things like that. And I understand that. But at the same time, are we looking at each other and figuring out how we can help each other? There needs right. to be a Black... Um, or minority cooperative on how we can help each other, how we can use each other. If music business did that alone with just the black artists, managers would have all the power and the music business wouldn't, right? So that's way, mm -hmm. one way to take away the power is to think about a cooperative. How can we help each other? Why wouldn't we use each other to get on each other's songs? Why, you know, they were now 50s, you know, you remember the Now albums. Why aren't yeah. we doing that with each other and passing that around, you know? So there's mm -hmm. a lot of things and, I, you know, these are the conversations that I'm trying to start now to have some dialogue to figure out how we can move this forward. Cool. And I appreciate you, you know, taking the time out to speak on this on the Finish Line platform, you know, mm -hmm. pitching this to the team. We just wanted to yeah. do something to help elevate, you know, voices yeah. in our community and help educate people as far as like what's going on. So, yeah. And I love that. I love that Finish Line is doing it. And I think more companies to do that. Right. So, you know, instead of just putting out this blanket release and saying we're supporting find out what the people are trying to do find out how can you actually get into these communities and what people are thinking so you could put some type of initiative um that really makes sense for everybody so it's, right. it's, a, it's a great job what you guys are doing thank you thanks for having me. yeah of course and i just want to give a shout out to saint john i saw him in the comments yeah um, you know it's our guy yeah yeah and saint john. yeah unless you have something else to you know end it on yeah, St. John's 10 time. times platinum, got the biggest yep. song in the world, and I'm happy about that. So thank yes. you, guys. Yeah, Boom. so hopefully you can work with him soon. And, <laughs> and yeah. Cool. All right. All right so you have a great weekend, Biggs. And, again, appreciate you taking the time out. So. All right, thanks, Oh, All right. All right. All right, later. Later.